Hello, I'm Joe Kirshner, CEO of Primrose Schools. At Primrose, we believe who children become is as important as what they know. And our balanced learning curriculum is really developed to nurture and guide children to develop active minds, healthy bodies, and happy hearts. This morning, we're gonna talk a little bit about belongingness and the importance of belongingness at Primrose. Belongingness means intentionally creating and maintaining an environment where everyone feels included. At Primrose, our goal is for every Primrose franchise owner to ensure a culture of belongingness in their school with their staff, to encourage families and educators to help children learn about themselves and others in a way that's accepting of all. And to do that, we've established the, our very first National Day of Belongingness on September 29th. We're very excited about this. Today, we have invited inspirational authors and creators to be part of a dialogue on belongingness and how we can help more children understand themselves and others through the wonderful world of books and art. I have with me today, Kate T. Parker. Kate Parker is a professional photographer and New York Times bestselling author. Kate is the author of Strong is the New Pretty, The Guided Journal, The Heart of a Boy, and Play Like a Girl. Kate lives in Atlanta, Georgia with her husband, two girls, and two golden retrievers. Hey Wan is an author and illustrator of many books, including Luli and the Language of Tea, Grandpa Across the Ocean, The Twins Blanket, Saturday is a Swimming Day. She was born and grew up in Korea. Now she lives in New York with her family. Welcome, Nguyen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Very thrilled to have you. I'm also pleased to welcome Ken Wilson Max who is an award-winning author, illustrator, and publisher of children's books. He was born in Zimbabwe and lives in London. Um, we're excited to have you here today, actually in Zimbabwe, Ken. Um, he's written more than 70 books published in many languages worldwide. So I think we'll start our conversation uh, just exploring a little bit about understanding differences. Today's child development experts generally agree that noting differences is healthy. It's assigning negativity to those differences that lead to prejudice. All these authors do a great job of showcasing commonality while embracing how we're all very unique. Kate, what is the role of belongingness in your work? Can you showcase an environment that everyone feels included through your books? Yeah, I mean, that that was the goal when I first started um, taking pictures. Um, like I, I started, I really didn't start with a goal to create books. I just wanted um, to showcase, and it started just showcasing girls as um, celebrating girls for, for who they are, um, whether that was, and I would just see it, I have two girls, I would just see it in my own girls that they were emotional and they were, they could be angry. They were dirty. Their hair wasn't brushed. They they didn't look perfect. And I didn't see a lot of imagery reflecting that back. So I wanted to start taking pictures to celebrate them for who they are at their most, like, you know, when they, when they, when they're like a hundred percent themselves and, and them to know that that was beautiful and that was something to be celebrated. So that's kind of how it started for me. And then it just sort of grew and grew from my girls to boys, to girls, you know, kind of all around the country and boys all around the country. So um, that's really my goal with my work is to um, celebrate the kids for who they are and um, and let them know that that's enough. That's and that's that's um, they don't need to change who they are. So it's interesting because all the research is showing us that the skills for the 21st century are really social emotional skills. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, curiosity, creativity, certainly confidence um, are skill sets that really have a huge influence on being able to live in a rapidly changing world. And by showcasing 
um, the uniqueness and the beautiful the beautiful aspect of uniqueness. Uh, it, you're really helping to influence that social emotional development, that confidence that's so important. Hey, Juan, your book, Grandpa Across the Ocean, shows his life in South Korea, which invites your readers from the same background to connect personally with the visuals while allowing others to experience something new. Why do you think it's important for children to see themselves reflected in society? So I grew up in Korea and came here as an adult. And then uh, everything looks like strange and unfamiliar. And so I get small and then I had kids and I thought I don't want them to be feel small in this world and they are beautiful as they are so I want them to see themselves in more books mm -hmm. and yeah and then it's not really different with others even though the set is different and then look is different but we are always the same in the core so i wanted to show more uh subtle ways so yeah so i yeah i wanted to write the book about it and i didn't expect it to be published because it's yeah it's i thought it's for the like small readers but then uh nowadays more and more people wants to read about others and then yeah different cultures so i'm glad yeah it can reach out more readers beautiful so Ken, how has your background influenced your work um so my background is pretty much my work. I mean, everything I do comes from uh, the way I see things, which is as an outsider uh, from living in Europe for so long. And um, I quickly realized that instead of it being something which held me back, it was my one advantage was that I could see things from a different point of view. And um, over the years, I've got I, I've got a little bit better each each with each book at using that to my advantage. Um, I tend to observe a lot of things um, as as an outsider, and I tend to use those things to create um, maybe not new stories, but universal stories, but from a slightly different perspective. So I think that's 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 the best way that my background has helped me. Did you live in Zimbabwe as a child and then move to London, or were you already there as a child? Uh, I lived in Zimbabwe up until I was 21. Mm -hmm. uh, arguably still a child when I when I left, mm -hmm. I would say, um, especially when I, when I got to London and realized that I didn't understand the language. <laughs> I didn't understand where people were coming from. Uh, it was a real baptism of fire. Uh, but there was another part of it, which was, you know, I was determined and um, I was just so excited to be among so many different people that's really beautiful so yeah. we know in a world that is so globally diverse and changing so fast in terms of people all over the world living all over the world um, that children are introduced to many different children from many different cultures and at primrose we have tried very very hard within our classrooms to put more and more books in the classrooms where all children can see themselves. Um, instead of seeing one, one environment, one culture, like you said, and it makes you feel like you're different and smaller versus included. And that's part of our, our goals with really helping ensure belongingness um, is understood with children, so they they are accepting of all individuals, and all individuals are comfortable. In in from the very earliest age, the earlier that you instill that in children, the better it stays with them for the rest of their life. So the work both of you are doing is so so important. I want to move now to how we take big ideas and make them accessible to children. So one of the ways we make big concepts accept, accessible is through the use of scientific process of observation to know what makes them different and the same. 
that might sound like this. Alicia has black hair and Quinn has red hair, but they both love ponytails. Tommy has peach skin and freckles, and Arjun has brown skin and no freckles, but they both get goosebumps when they feel a cool breeze. So, hey, Juan, how do you help make big ideas accessible to children when we're talking about a word like belongingness? So I try to uh, uh, put many different kids, uh, so, and many different families in the picture books. So I grew up with like Korean people, all looks like me and the dark haired skin color. So when I saw other family with like different race, races and then different like, yeah, sexes and oh, I had this prejudice. But if I grew up with all those different Nowadays, all those different families and those things, I grew up with those. I didn't feel the prejudice like I had before. So I tried to put like different family. Mom has red hair, but daughter has a dark hair. Mom had dark skin and daughter has like lighter skin and all these different things. So. Yeah, I tried to illustrate many different kids in the same yeah family, and then yeah, we don't look at it like a strange family and different, it's just normal. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. In our schools today, the diversity is is very very strong. Right. And those children if they can all feel like they belong in a classroom and then they can see themselves in the art and the books that the books that they read the art that they do and they celebrate their individualness but also honor their differences um, it is something that becomes a perspective that is just natural versus what you just explained where where you grew up in a culture where everybody looked the same right mm -hmm. america is not like that anymore and <laughs> most of the world isn't like that today and mm -hmm. so giving our children the perspective of of a much more diverse world i think is a beautiful thing mm -hmm. um kate hey, how do children react to your work as compared to adults have you thought about that much Oh, you know, it's it's so funny. Um, like I I love hearing how people or kids especially react to the work. Like they and it's it's really funny because I didn't I didn't set like I said before, I didn't set out to write a book. I didn't and I didn't really think past creating the book, which is kind of weird. Um, but but the fact that little girls sort of will read um Strong's New Pretty or little boys will read um The Heart of a Boy and the I, I'll go to signings and girls will have the girls names memorized and they'll say, how do you pronounce her name? I can't I don't know how to pronounce her name. Also, what is she doing now? You know, and they want the updates on these girls because <laughs> they feel like books. And I remember this as a kid books you read as a kid become are, are a bigger part of you. They, they become like part of your story and you, and you ingest them and you, and you, um, I don't know, they just are so important to you as a kid. And it was honestly, it was like the greatest compliment ever that I was like, oh, her name is Taylor and she is still swimming like, or whatever the, you know, I'm just like, oh, you think these girls are celebrities or, and I'm, and I'm like, no, they're just like you. And you, you know, every, every kid would be important and they have a great enough story to be featured in these books. So that's what I try to like, I, I try to emphasize to the kids is that everyone, everyone has a story and everyone has something that is worthy of celebrating to be in these books. I just didn't happen to know you when I was shooting these, <laughs> books, but, you know, like, I think, I love that part of it that people really it means something to them and um I hadn't thought about it but it you know as I was creating it you just get so focused and um making sure that it's the best thing that you can do but you forget that it gets in someone's hands and then it's on their on their coffee table or they give it as a gift and it's like 
It's honestly, it's the greatest compliment ever. So it's it's Absolutely. my favorite part of it. It becomes part of of who they are and what they what they're what they believe as they're growing. What about adults? Do you think that adults understand the intentionality of what you're writing and why? I think so. I mean, it's so funny. I was I was as we were like kind of gearing up. I was just scrolling through uh, my Instagram feed and somebody DM'd me um, and she just said, "Oh, hey." Um, I just, and you know, she's a lady my age. She goes, I just wanted to thank you. I got Strong as New Pretty a couple years ago, and it means so much to me. Um, and I, I just love that so much because I, again, not thinking about, about how it affects people. And it was just, I was just, I was honestly creating um, a photo series and, and a bunch of, and a book for something that I would have liked as a kid. I didn't see that. I was, I was, um, I was very loud and I was I was a I was a tomboy and I was I just didn't see you know like I just didn't see a lot of myself reflected in the things I would read or the you know I I mean maybe Ramona was the was the only one that I felt like you know Ramona Quimby um yeah. I really felt a kinship with her but I didn't see a lot of that so um I'm really thankful to have had the opportunity to help um, you know, like celebrate that, you know, if you are slightly outside, you know, and we all are slightly outside the norm and to just right. acknowledge it and celebrate it and be like, no, this is the best part of you. This little weird part of you, that's the best part of you. That's beautiful. So Kendall, in Astro Girl, your yep. book, Astrid is the astronaut hero. Her dad is looking after her and her mom is yep. all away at work, right? What experiences yep. influenced your decisions to literally flip the stereotypes like this in your work? It was sort of based on my own childhood because I was raised by my uh, mother and her sisters and all my cousins. Pretty much all my cousins are, 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 are women now, girls then. And um, I was kind of the young boy who came into all of this, all, all of this when I, uh, uh, you know, when, when I first came to the capital Harare, because I grew up uh, just near Victoria Falls um, for the first few years of life. And then I came ahead of the family uh, to go to school, basically. And um, at school, um, I, I, had, I had my older cousins with me and they influenced everything. I mean, I think they gave me this whole big feeling of strength and resilience and creativity and an appreciation of fun. And they made it so that I never really felt as though you had to be male or female to, to achieve, you know, I just, um, but when I got to the UK and um, started working, I could see that things were not in favor of women, I don't think, uh, in terms of the workplace. And, you know, obviously now in 2022, 2023, as things are beginning to change. Um, but this was back in the 80s when I came to the, to the UK. And it was not, it wasn't quite as, 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 as um, uh, equal. Mm -hmm, the verb. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't diverse, it wasn't really necessarily equal. And, um, you know, so I, there was lots to learn. And I, and, I, and, I, and I just think that a book like this, I wanted to make sure that, first of all, you know, she's a hero and her friend Jake is the damsel waiting for her to come back. I wanted to make sure that, you know, her dad is at home with her, making sure that she's OK. So. Um, he's doing that traditional uh, women woman role, um, yeah. and her mom is being is being the adventurer. Um, but at the same time, and that meant not being not actually uh, talking a lot about what the dad does. For instance, he's never mentioned. Um, and I thought, well, you know, if if there's another one, I will actually talk about her dad and what he does and, 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 and see if there's any more things we can flip, you know. Um, but the key thing in my mind was to take heroism and really tear up that description and, and, and redefine it um, in honor of the people that for me are heroes, you know, my, my mother, my, my, my aunts, my cousins, all women in general, really. So um, this was my, this was my number one thought. And I'm, I'm really happy that the book um, exists as that. That's what it exists for me. 
Yes. We are we are too. We are very happy too. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So you know, so, you know that there's another one. There's another one which is up. It's called Ecoville, which is just beautiful. just now uh, last week. So another another girl in that kind of st story. So look out for that one. We will. I want to take also a couple more moments to just share that this month we shared an announcement on our social media about this panel with an opportunity for audience to send in questions and um, we're going we're going to dive in now into some of the questions we received so Kate how can we help children learn ways to support others in feeling like they belong I think you can start at home by accepting the parts of our kids that um are, I guess maybe just accepting our kids as a whole if we accept our kids and they feel accepted at home and they feel loved at home and they feel that they can be honest with who they are at home then that extends to their friends that extends in their world so I think it's just trying to do everything we can um to let our kids know that who they are at their core is okay Thank you, that, that's beautiful. So, hey Juan, how can we help children understand and celebrate differences they may or may not be able to see with their own eyes? I think for children, it's much easier to yeah. accept. Just like Kate said before, yeah, at home, we, we should, as a mom and as a parent, we should accept our children more and then they can accept others yeah. That makes sense. So, Kate, how how have you been able to help your children learn ways to support others in feeling like they belong? I feel like, at least with my own kids, I'm I'm like maybe a little too like nosy. I'm like, what's going on? Okay, wait, who's coming? What? And my my girls are older now; they're teenagers. Yeah. And so, um, but as you know, as they're younger, it's I'm always just like I'd. I always tell them, like, I'd always err on the side of let's include as many people as we can, you know, um, don't let's, you know, you know how, how bad it feels when you don't feel included and trying to just um, instill sort of some empathy and um, understanding of, you know, it's better when everybody's around. It's better when there's more people. It's better. It's better if we don't leave people out um, and um, that trying to sort of foster that inclusivity and reminding them um, of how, um, you know, just a little kindness goes a long way is really important, um, especially socially, you know, and then, and then if they get left out, um, you know, you just kind of have to move past it. But then, you know, like, then you don't do that the next time, you know, like that's, that's, you just have to rise above and just be a bigger person because it feels bad. Um, and it feels bad to them, it feels bad to you, so. Let's let's be a little more inclusive and, um, you know, just welcoming, like be the friendly kid. That's all. That's what if I if I um, have any success as a parent, if I see my kids being like the, if the friendly kid, I would be so I would just I would be so proud of that. So that's tr what we try to um, hit hard at home. You know? And I suspect you did that from very young age. So now it just becomes part of their life and you've role modeled that for them, too. Right. I hope so. Yeah, we try. <laughs> so, Ken, I have one uh, one question for you. Then I'm going to ask all three of you one more yeah. question. You, how do you work to ensure all children are represented in your books and in your writing? Um, I I really start with ideas that um, could be any child in any situation, and then. Because my work is um, mostly inspired by observation, but what I see on the street, if, if I'm out, sometimes I will see a, a, a girl, a boy, or a family and think to myself, I, th I think those could actually work for what I'm trying to do. Um, and then I'll go from there, but I don't, I don't start with um, the, the background of the person in mind, first of all. I think I start with the story. Um, and then I... I ensure that if I'm going to talk about uh, a family or a, or a child character that is from a background that's different to mine, that I do enough research to make sure that they are at least have the integrity and the, they're believably who they are. Um, but I think most of all, I try and include 
children who have friends that are other children as well, so that not only can they see themselves in the books, but they can see their friends in the books and everyone can. So the books are for everybody rather than just saying, you know, oh, this book's for, you know, black people or, or, or Asian people. Because I just think that that, that limits it. It's, it's for their friends too. It's for, it's for everyone to see that, uh, you know, a picnic is a picnic is a picnic. Um, but you can have it, you know, somewhere in Kenya, in somewhere in Guatemala, in somewhere in New York City. It doesn't really, it's still a picnic. All the values that are there are the same. And, and what Kate said about these very simple, straightforward values about, you know, understanding, moving on, um, just being the nice kid, the nice child. Um, they're so, it is a very simple suggestion, but it's just so powerful because when you start applying that, you realize that you can probably write or illustrate about many different types of children without necessarily having to go into detail about them, you know, because they can be a nice kid, they can be kind, they can be friendly, but they can also be from anywhere with all of these qualities. Um, and I think that's what makes uh, writing for children um, so much fun and so rewarding is that you're actually there and then getting the sense of belongingness uh, built into the story. And then you're also just getting these children to recognize it in other children straight away. Yeah. And, of course, and, and we're really hoping that by the time they become teens, they, they carry this along and it becomes a, a, a way for them to make uh, really good decisions about their lives going forward. So we, that's what we're trying to do. Um, yeah. Starting as young as possible is always fantastic. I mean, I have a daughter who, you know, has, I think she wanted to DNA. She wanted me to do some DNA testing to see her ancestry, and and uh, it came back. I think there's about ten different nationalities involved in her, you know. And it's a real cocktail. And I said, "You're a citizen, citizen of the world, completely," um, you know. And I think that's a great start. She feels so proud now. I mean, she's 18, but she feels so proud that she has all of the stuff. She, yeah. I, can I can be anything. So. Um, Taking lessons from young people helps me create stories for them that are uh, as universally uh, uh, inclusive as possible. Well, I'm so honored to be having the conversations that we're having. And we believe that at Purus, we believe that storytelling is creating experiences that children can imagine. Mm -hmm. And within those stories, as we've discussed, the the essence of belongingness and the importance is really illustrated and told in the storytelling in a way that um, children embrace and they remember over time. You never know which story is going to be the one that inspires them the most. Um, as I have one last question from the audience, and it is, and I'd love each of you to answer this. So we'll start with you, Kate. How can we get more people involved in the National Day of Belongingness? Are, are there creative ideas or anything you can think of that would touch the hearts of parents and teachers and help them understand how critically important providing children access to books, illustrations, stories, and art um, have such influence on children? I mean, I think I think if people shared their individual story of when they when they felt seen and when they felt that they belonged um, and how universal that is and um, just those moments of when somebody reached out and included them or that they found, you know, it's like I felt, you know, I felt fine when um when I finally went to, when I went to college and I went, and this is my moment, I went to college and I was a huge soccer player and I finally joined a team of girls that all loved the sport as much as me and put it as like their number one thing. And I had never, I'd never um, seen that or had that or felt like that was normal. And I just felt home. And you know, it's so cool. I was I was 18 years old to find that. Um, but it just makes you feel like, oh, I found my people. And mm. those moments I think are huge. And just maybe asking people, what is your moment? And because everyone has a moment of when they felt like they belonged or they felt like they found their people, it felt like home. And um, 
recognizing how important that is. Um, if you just even talk about it, it's like, okay, well, we need to find this for everyone else. And, um, you know, encouraging those things that people will find, especially kids, encouraging those things, those interests, those passions that will help them feel like they belong, I think is huge. So maybe just asking, you know, hey, what's your moment? And then having people share that, you know, through social media, which is like a really good use of social media to find, you know, like, cause it, it's, they're, they're like these weird and quirky and funny and interesting things. And I think it is really telling about people you know, to find those moments that they finally felt like they belonged um, is really, I would, I mean, I would love to hear those moments. That, that we, we have uh, wow moments for many, many years at Primrose and those moments of when you felt like you belong could be beautiful and inspirational, but also could be foundational for more stories for the future, right? I hate that you had to get to be 18 years old before you felt like you belong, but if we start earlier and more intentionally, in the way that we create early learning environments at school and at home, I think we can help influence, influence that. Hey, Juan, um, for you, is there anything you can think of that would, would we could do to um, raise the awareness of how important belongingness is on the National Day of Belongingness? Uh, I think everything, this is big change, so everything has to start with us small and like personal level so we have to be i'm a, an asian woman living in us so mm -hmm. i want to be a not a stereotype like nice little <laughs> girl in uh like so i want to be i am kind of that girl though but I try to talk about myself more and I stand up more. So every person has to like start in personal level so they can talk about themselves more and they can find each other. If we can, if we can use books like your stories yeah. and give children the confidence that, that who they are is important and special, they'll be more more able, I think, and more willing to speak up and have their own voice like you're talking about right now. So, and Ken, one more question for you. So is there, do you have any ideas on how we can get people more involved in this National Day of Belongingness to bring more awareness to the importance of this in regard to, and you brought it up and it's a belief that we have, who children are is as important as what they know academically. Yeah, I, I, I think I think like Haywoon said and like Kate said, you know, it, it starts with small things. But I, I am quite. What about if the, if children were encouraged to um, read uh, stories of children in other places to each other? You know, share the stories like out loud and then discuss them straight away. That could be something. Or um, maybe we should, should have had a panel of children. And maybe that's a great <laughs> idea for next year, right? Yeah, exactly. What if we yeah. Our partners and had them read stories, and then had a panel of children that's telling awesome. us their what it means to them. That's awesome. I think that could be awesome. They could be really great sort of doing that because you you will see how much they understand of the story and what it means to them, and also you'll find out what they how they how they read and understand texts in in, in general and how it applies to them. And I think. Um, it's also finding the common ground, like saying, as Kate said, if you can find children that like soccer, and then they can talk about soccer, and then, in, you know, then they can realize that actually they may come from different neighborhoods or different backgrounds, but they like one. They all have the, what they have in common is, is is soccer, you know, which incidentally I think is one of the most integrated and inclusive sports that you can find because every single type of person that comes from every part of the world. Um, you know, you can find them in, in all the sort of football leagues, soccer leagues, sorry, football in the UK. No, so. I was just going to say, I was just <laughs> leagues, recently and they were around the world. football and they really meant soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it different, them, right? Yeah, exactly. And you can find these children, you can find these, these young people. They all have inspiring stories, you know, um, coming from poor backgrounds and 
going up the ladder and being well known and being so influential to other to other generations of young people. So I think being able to for children to be able to tell their own stories, pick out the books that they like and then talk about them and why they like them and discuss it with other children so they can have uh, uh, an understanding of what who likes it and why. And also to be able to look at other stories and see whether or not those other stories have something they can pick out and discuss because I think um, sometimes, you know, we might understand what the meaning, the, the, the hidden meaning is in the story, but not everyone does. To be able to have that brought out and talked about or performed or played or, or you know, would be, would be fantastic to see. Um, and I like to, uh, the, there's another thing I was thinking of as you were both talking, uh, Kate and Heron, is that um, there is an experiment that happened, I think it's in Denmark or Sweden, where they have this human library, I don't know if you've heard about it, but they, instead of taking out a book from the library, you get to sit <laughs> with the person from a, some, someone else completely and they tell you all about them for 20 minutes. And you can actually <laughs> find out everything you want, you ask everything you want to ask and you, they tell you. So that's like, you know, hire that person like like a like a library book, like an encyclopedia. And I find it, ideas coming from that would be so interesting. Mm -hmm. I love that, the human library. What an awesome. Yeah, it's fantastic. Experiment. It is a fantastic experiment. That's yeah. a beautiful creative idea. Um, I want to thank each of you uh, for joining us this, to have this conversation. Um, the work that you do is is like us in early childhood education, we believe the earlier, the better with young children. And um, for us, books are just opportunities to explore their world in different ways. And we have become so much more intentional in making sure that the books that we bring into our classrooms like yours, um, open the door to conversations because reading a book really Part of reading a book with children and inspiring them is the adult-child interaction as you're reading the book, the conversations that come out of that. And um, we work really um, focused with our teachers to teach them the importance of that. And we think it's really important for parents to understand it's not just what they read and what they see, but the conversation that it inspires that really influences children and to whom they become. And to the confidence that makes them feel comfortable, they belong, and then they are inspired and empowered to be everything they can be and whatever they want to be in this world. So thank you again. I really appreciate very much you joining us. Um, you can go to our website, primroseschools.com, to learn more about belongingness in our curriculum, Balanced Learning, as well as resources about how to celebrate belongingness with us all month long. Thank you. I appreciate all of you joining me so much. Thanks for having Bye. us.